Did you hear it? Because that's how fast the implosion happened on the Ocean Gate submarine. What's up, guys? It's Rocket here, and today we're going to talk about the miserable failure from an engineering perspective that is the Ocean Gate submarine. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure to do so. That way you get all the latest news that's coming out around this and also anything else that's related to technology. I try to cover it all. Let's go ahead and dive in. The number one thing that surprises me more than anything else out of this is just the physics around how fast a life can end when you are 12,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Now, to put this into perspective, because you can't really visualize 12,000 feet uh, underwater because it's pitch black. And so there's, you know, no difference between like 8,000 and 12,000 as far as what you visually can perceive. Oh, the only thing that increases is the pressure and the depth, but you can't really put a visual map to that. So let me give it to you in a reverse perspective. So uh, even even picturing something as like a skyscraper, right? Like it's really hard unless you're standing on a skyscraper to really picture how high you actually are. Um, but I should make it well known that recreational pilots can only fly at a maximum altitude of 10,000 feet. So 10,000 feet, you are well up in the air. You can see out for a very, very long distance. And, you know, the, but the cap for recreational pilots is 10,000 feet. These guys were the reverse under the water deeper than a recreational pilot is allowed to fly. Like, that's really, really far in a direction when it comes to height or depth. Like, that is really far. Like, pilots can't even fly in the opposite direction. Certain types of pilots can't even fly in the opposite direction height-wise without getting a, another special license. And these guys were like, we're going in a carbon fiber tube down 12,500 feet to the bottom of the Atlantic. I mean, I so, so all the news that has been out around them cutting corners obviously they cut corners. I mean, to me, this almost feels like a bit of a scam. Okay. Like, so in a money perspective, and the next thing we're going to touch on is the money. Okay. $250,000. Okay. So that can buy you a trip to space now on the blue origin rocket with Jeff Bezos, or you could have gone and seen the Titanic underwater for $250,000. Now, one of these companies is backed by a billionaire and has been thoroughly tested, had 22 successful missions and three successful deployments of their safety measures. They have an entire team of people working on the, you know, on all the physics and all of these safety measures, all the engineering. They like, again, they have a billionaire's backing and the other in comparison, honestly feels like a bit of a scam. I mean, like it's very cool what you're getting to do, but the only viewport in that thing was sitting on the toilet from what it looks like on the schematics. And you are going down and up in about four hours, which is longer than Blue Origin, but like the risk that you're taking. And again, going to space is very risky, but they tested that thing for years before putting a person inside of it. This feels like, you know, it was pieced together very quickly, just trying to turn a quick buck. I mean, let's not forget about the most famous meme from the past couple of days of the Xbox battery dying uh, or the controller disconnected symbol <laughs> showing up on, you know, the Titanic images because it's basically about what could happen. Now that the information has come out about the news of it imploding, which I, I, I just want to touch on one more time really quick. 30 milliseconds. I, I'm going to play this again and I'll play it three, two, one. Like that is so incredibly small of an amount of time. I mean, you can't think an amount of time. So like from a networking perspective, right? A good ping is around like 28, 30 milliseconds, right? Like that's a good ping. That's how quickly your life went from completely normal to you are now just a skeleton. Like all muscle, tissue, brain, all of that, just poof, paste. Like, and so the physics behind this, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, but if you guys haven't like seen the physics, I'm not going to get too gory here with it. First thing is the heat, the amount of heat from the pressure, right? So you go from like, it was 39 degrees was the water temperature down at that depth, which is close to freezing. So you go from say the inside of the capsule at the time that they were descending was around 50 degrees, given that, you know, you're sinking and there's still residual air and body heat and stuff like that. So say it's like 50 degrees in there, uh, Fahrenheit and it goes from that to the t surface temperature of the sun in about 10 milliseconds 
because we still have to get through the entire 30 milliseconds to where you, you know you could go bye bye so 10 milliseconds of that is you turning into a roasted chicken fried thing uh and then the next 15 to 20 seconds is the wall of water coming in and hitting so hard that you it's 6000 is 6000 psi 6000 psi your pressure washer okay your average residential pressure washer goes up to like 2000 2500 psi and that's enough to like dig through some light concrete that's enough to you can dig a hole with that right but on your skin i mean jesus 2000 psi that's going to take skin off that's going to go straight down to the bone but 6000 oh forget about it and you're not and it's not just one single fine point you're talking about on your entire body all at once like no nah, no nah, it, it, it's gone it's gone so the, the physics around that and in such a short time span which i, I mean so I'm very happy that, you know, it was an instantaneous death and no one even realized it. Like, you couldn't have realized it. You you just, like, th I think about, like, a driver's reaction time, right? Like, if I see something in front of me, it takes me about, I'd say, a half a second to a second to be like, whoa, put your foot on the brake. Like, you see it, put your foot on the brake. Like, but this, I mean, again, that that, that 30 milliseconds, no, you, you don't even realize it. You would have never known. Like, you may have seen, like, a flash I would imagine maybe it was some sort of like white light and maybe that's like the last thing that you saw or like maybe it's blackness. I don't know, but you wouldn't, maybe you saw like a singular image, but you definitely didn't feel anything. Um, they didn't, they more than likely 99% sure they didn't feel anything. Um, but anyway, going back, going back to the structural integrity of this and that that's really the big thing that came out of this implosion. So it was built from carbon fiber uh, and, and, and a mix of other things, but the carbon fiber is the big thing. And, you know, I've talked about this on, uh, the Curly Brace podcast a little bit, and I've talked about this with some other people, but like carbon fiber is meant to, it's really strong when you use it, you bend it in the way it's intended to be bent. So if you know what you're doing with carbon fiber, then you can make really strong things, but also it snaps really, really easy if you're not careful. Uh, and this is why Formula One cars all the time, I mean, they they barely bump something and then the carbon fiber just phew, splinters. Uh, and that's because it's being bent in a way it's not meant to be bent. Now you can make the argument that, yeah, you know, it's going down, you know, they, they made the carbon fiber in a way to, you know, keep it lighter. And then also they, they molded it in a way that the structural integrity is going to be better, um, you know, with the way that they molded it. But my argument back is like nothing beats steel, nothing beats steel. I mean, challenger deep was five, I think it was five inch thick, five inch thick steel to get down into Mariana's trench. Um, I mean, why reinvent the wheel? I, I maybe, and again, this goes back to the money thing, right? This, this really goes back to the money thing for me. Five inch steel is not cheap. Uh, building a submarine is not cheap. Uh, as you can see, using a Logitech controller obviously was the preferred method for them to save money on that. All the engineers that have come out and said, like, this is a terrible idea, this is a terrible idea. You know, it's clear. It's clear it's a terrible idea. It's clear that no one should have ever gotten on that thing, much less in gone under two feet of water, much less, you know, 12,000 feet of water. You can't even open it from the inside. There's no escape hatch. So even so, again, the big concern, you know, on Monday was like if this thing surfaced and it's bobbing up and down in the ocean somewhere, they can't even get out. So they could run out of oxygen even if they're on top of the water. Like crazy, absolutely crazy that you would design something like this. I mean, it's like they basically just made a cask it to fall to the bottom of the ocean and, and hope as long as the batteries don't die in your Logitech controller, you'd make it back up just fine. Like absolutely wild. Um, and this, this really comes into the, you know, back to the whole scam thing for me, like $250,000 a ticket. Hey, what are these billionaires doing? And they, they, they must just be bored billionaires. And that's, you know, it, it reminds me of, um, a couple of episodes on some of those cop shows where it's like, you run into a group of like really, really wealthy individuals and they're just chasing that adrenaline. That's kind of what this feels like. Like they have all the money in the world. They can buy whatever they want, but they want to do something that no one else has done. This is exactly what, you know, that I think that kind of situation was where it's like, no one else in the world can afford this. And this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to do something that no one else will ever get to do. 
I'm going to do it, even if it's super dangerous, because I just need that adrenaline in my life because I already have everything else. And so that's my kind of thought on to why people would do this with knowing the risk, um, because any sane person, if you saw that you could die seven times, you know, in this waiver that you have to sign, that's I, I wouldn't do it. I don't think I'd do it like knowing it's and especially on that one Iranian billionaire and bringing his son. No way I do that. Absolutely not. Um, then that, that's just me personally. But I think a lot of people are like, who on earth would do this? <laughs> Even if you had the money, I'd rather fly on Jeff Bezos's rocket up to space than to jump in this thing. I mean, at least that's been tested and proven. And, you know, you can see all the work that's gone into it versus this, where it's like, they've literally said for the entire time, they've cut corners, they're risk takers. Like, no, no. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I think it's really, really unfortunate, but also it obviously could have been avoided in so many ways. There was, n there were no safety measures put in place. There were no backups put in place to any of the equipment. Like, maybe except for some of the ballast stuff. I mean, they did have like an, emer like if something went wrong, it would emergency ballot, like an emergency float. Um, but obviously that didn't matter, you know, when they were <laughs> down there. I like, it just, it's just frustrating from an engineering perspective. It's just so frustrating because like, and I know that engineer that was fired for speaking out about it. Like he must still feel some like, you know, not, I wouldn't say guilt, but j definitely sorrow and definitely anger, I would definitely feel anger if I had given all the warnings out and they were completely ignored and it's something catastrophic like this happened. Like I would definitely feel, you know, very angry inside that I tried to tell people and no one listened and I was fired for it and I was sued for it just to try to keep people safe. And, you know, that absolutely would just eat me alive inside. And it's a, it's a, it's kind of a warning to the engineering community when working on projects like this, like, I, I don't know how true it is with Elon or Jeff Bezos or, you know, other billionaires or stuff like that, but the mission to success has to be safe. And if, you know, there, there's, there's an acceptable amount of risk that I think everyone has to take when you're doing something new and daring, but you also have to realize that these are people's lives that you're impacting in a positive or a negative way. And you have to make sure that you're not going to endanger them more than necessary just because you want to get something across the line faster, or just because you want to save a little bit of money. And I think it's a really good lesson to a lot of these big, you know, adventure and futuristic companies like Blue Origin, SpaceX, and, you know, any other diving companies, anything else that takes you to the extremes. I'd say even going up to the Himalayas, you know, like all of this stuff is it's, it's on the extreme of what humans can do and it's very new and it's, it's novel and it's, you know, really dangerous. And I think that maybe this is a sign that we should just take a step back for a minute and really evaluate, especially on the technology side, is everything that we're doing as safe as it possibly can be? And if you haven't already triple checked, you should go ahead and triple check and quadruple check just to make sure that everything is exactly how it should be. Because in 30 milliseconds, your life could go from totally normal to absolutely nothing. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.